All right, welcome to the Cult of Meth Bear, our first um, video podcast. You get to see our ugly faces. Um, thanks to Nicole for the set dressing. It looks fantastic. Yeah, very nice. We're very professional here now. This is a legit operation. It's a step up in the world. And maybe we'll get two more subscribers. That's that's two more subscribers by the end of the year. That's our <laughs> that's our goal. All right, we're. We're um, here at beautiful Lake Tahoe. We're not really, but we're pretending. Yeah, we're um, as close as anyone else. Yeah. Um, not a great start for the NHL. Uh, you know, you would think that they would have planned for sunlight in an outdoor game. You know, the sun has only Perhaps. been in the sky for four and a half billion years. So yeah. maybe you should have factored that in. I don't know. Uh, that would have been a good idea. But they had... they. Back in the 90s, they had the... Um... If they were able to play at Caesar's <laughs> Palace in 1991. It was, it's, that's kind of strange. I, may, may, did they have that game at night? I, I don't It was that. at night, but still, it's outside in Las Vegas. Clearly what they, wa- <laughs> clearly what they wanted was that, oh my God, that shot, the right? mountains and the lake. Which was just, like, were beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was fantastic. They just didn't care if someone got hurt is all. Yeah. Just like, they just did it for, we just wanted it for this period so we get all our nice shots yeah. and then, you know, if someone gets hurt, mm, So be it. Oh well. Okay, oh well. Mm, we'll deal with it. Um, but the Bruins, um, I, I would say, this might, this might be a strange game because they're a little beat up right now. Yeah. That's um, a statement. They went on their nice little run, and then they decided to put John Moore in the lineup. Uh-huh. And surprise, oh, surprise, 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 they lose the first two games they put John <laughs> Moore in the lineup. It's like, who could have predicted that? Um, uh, I mean, at what point do they just realize this guy gives you nothing? Well, they don't even have a choice right now. <laughs> nothing. Well, I think... Um, if I'm not mistaken, Bakaninen's getting in the lineup for this game. So I at least believe finally, we, I think you still have to play. Um, you'd still have to be playing more, right? I think so. Because uh, they're still like they still have no one else to go to. <laughs> uh, I would just dress five defensemen at that point. <laughs> um, five defensemen in a traffic cone on wheels. So I still have some issues with this team. Um, DeBrusque has been a non-factor. Coyle isn't playing at the same level that they need him to play. I mean, he doesn't need to be the guy that he was last season, but still, he needs to step up and get back to a point where, you know, they can rely on him in that third line. Yeah, it's never a good thing when someone like Coyle kind of goes off the radar and you don't notice him out there. Yeah. You know, um, it, it really kind of falls back on their whole, you know, secondary scoring issues and, and this and that. And you need someone like Coyle to really step up here. Yeah. Because they're still having a really tough time scoring five on five. So, for me, all the, all the, the, the things that, you know, we've been saying since our preview in December, it's not the defense. The defense, even with, you know, being banged up, Pretty solid. It's it's not the first line. No. It's not the goaltending. I don't know how many times we're just going to keep banging our heads against the wall. I mean, because there's nothing we can do about it. We don't. No. We don't. We can't run the team. Of we can. Not. You know, we can just be like look and, and say, oh well, you know, Bjork. He's been playing great, but he hasn't produced. And like all these guys, it's like. Yeah. It's what are we like? Yeah. They haven't been dominant. <laughs> like they haven't been a dominant team. No. But they're still at the top of like the NHL standings, like one of the best teams. And and you look at it and be like, okay, you'll have a great regular season, and then you're one and done in the playoffs because this is the way this is going. Well, of course, because they are heavily reliant on their special teams, their power play. That's the only way that they're scoring goals on their power play, and. We've seen it in the playoffs. You don't get the same penalties called. Referees tend to, you know, keep it a little tight. And if the Bruins aren't getting these, you know, power play chances, four or five a night, 
and they're only maybe getting one or two, and they still can't score five on five, then we're just going to keep seeing the same nonsense over and over and over. I, I don't know how long they're going to wait until they do something about it, or Don's doing something about it, because I, I don't... <laughs> I can't go through another, like, fucking off-season like this. This is just getting kind of absurd. Well, what you'd like to see is finally the Bruins having a, you know, a permanent solution to what their second line's going to look like. It just seems like every year they're looking for an upgrade on their second line or middle six or whatever. It's, it's a chronic problem. Why, it's just like... <laughs> why do we have to keep doing this every single year? They went year? to the doctors and they're like, oh, well, you're going to have a second line problem for like at least 10 years or so, so... You're going to have to, you know, deal with that and just rotate kaka kasha into yeah. the lineup. Yeah. Take, take a couple of yeah. these step the acts. And call and, me in the morning and then we'll, you know. And then I'll, I, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about another <laughs> second line winger that we can, you know, add to your shitty second line. Yeah. David Krejci's got just standing there with his dick in the wind just being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but, you know. So true. <clears throat> David Krejci will be out. Studnika is back up in the lineup. Uh, which I do like. Like I said, Stiffy for Studnika. Um, another guy that's going to need to step up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to expect going into this game because Philadelphia uh, having guys in COVID protocol themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you think the Bruins roster issues are a mess right now. Philadelphia's is absolutely absurd. So hopefully you can steal a win. One thing I want to, I do want to say is like, I I don't want to hear this thing from Bruins fans like, yeah, we beat Philadelphia like every time we play. Like that literally doesn't mean anything. No, it means nothing. It might mean a tiny bit, like a tiny bit to them and like sort of psychological uh, situation if they go to the yeah. playoffs, but not really. So it's just like, who cares? Like, who gives a shit if you beat them every time? It's not like you, have, you, you played them and you were dominant once, and that's because Carter Hart shit his pants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I, don't, I don't know what to expect. Uh, I would la- <laughs> I'm, re- I'm looking forward to the Bruins playing more than, like, one game a week. That would be fantastic. Yeah. The schedule's been well, fucked I mean, up. All these other teams can stay out of COVID protocol. It would be fantastic. No. What's no. going to be a problem is the Bruins are going to be, you know, and you hope it doesn't happen, but it has happened in the past where their schedule towards the end of the season has been so compact that they kind of lose some gas. And, you know, I, I think March, there's something like they have 15 games with 16 days off or vice versa. But, I mean, in tough the hockey titties. world, in the hockey world, that is tough. But, titties. no, absolutely. I mean, I get where you're coming from. It, they're professional athletes, and that shouldn't be an issue, but it's like... That should be an advantage for them. If, we, if we're if we like, oh, well, they're, they got dead legs coming when they're playing their one game a week, and, like, listen to Jack Edwards playing, well, the the Bruins can't. They're, they're pretty slow off to the gate. They haven't played in so many... It's like, okay. And then on the other hand, they're like, oh, well, they played too many fucking games. It's like, how many excuses are you going to give these fucking games? professional athletes and you've injected yourself full of like youthful defensemen mm-hmm. um and hopefully you know uh your veterans back there like um uh kneecaps mcgee uh <laughs> is able to you know stay healthy because there's another guy that they rely on mm-hmm. uh what do you want to see from back in Ina? um i mean do we know who he's going to play with. I didn't check. Be... I probably should have. <laughs> but uh, I would imagine he's probably going to slot next to uh, Miller because mm-hmm. I mean that would make sense. Yeah. Um, no, I just want to see if he can step into the lineup and kind of like, you know, Zaboral and so, um, Yeah, Zaboral, I mean he has, so Zaboral hasn't set the world up, but he's no, just been but he's solid. Solid. Yeah. solid. And that's all you really want to see. And you don't do too much. Yeah. And I think Vakaninen, with the skill set that he has, might try to do too much mm. to a detriment. Not like John Moore, who won't do anything at all, right. except for turning the puck over, which will lead to sustained pressure for the next, <laughs> the next 90 <laughs> seconds. Oh, man, I can't wait for that. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so there isn't too much stuff that I want to get to on the uh, the Boston Bruins because uh, there really isn't much to talk about that we haven't banged our head against the wall and said over and over and over again, and we will continue to say over and over again. I will again. say, though, the other night it proves that New Jersey is just going to be a really tough team for them to play against for the rest of the season. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, the first two games it was not a good matchup. The other night they look, they look piss poor, but it just goes to show you it's going to be, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for them going forward. I mean, think they got, what, something... Five more, five more games five more against them like could, a 56 game schedule it's there's a definitely lot of times a you're going to meet somebody there's definitely a speed thing there with uh where they've struggled in the past with speedy speedy teams mm-hmm. um you know they got wood and uh, gusev and th- those guys and that's that's you know it could be difficult um one, one, not as bad of a situation cuz you don't have Zidane Chara. Mm-hmm. um fucking skating in mud. Um, but one fun thing we do want to get to, um, we decided to come up with our Bruins killers of the 2000s. So from 2000 till now, we are going to pick the 12 players we feel have been a pain in the dick for the Bruins and have killed them. Um, and, uh, we'll start with goaltenders. We each pick two goaltenders. Mike, you can, how about you, uh, start with your goalies? So I'm going to start with the obvious one, which is our good old friend, Braden Holpe. Daddy Holpe. Daddy Holpe. Has always been a bad goalie matchup for the Bruins ever since he stepped into the league. Um, it, it, you talk about, you know, shutting the door on them. Constantly, they had a tough time in what was it, 2012 yeah. in the playoffs. They really had no answer for the guy. And how many games did Washington? Like nine or ten in a row. It's something absurd. Yeah. You know they had no answer until they finally beat them on Super yeah, Bowl Super Sunday, Sunday a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. Yeah, and it was like a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and they like and Hopi still played great. Mm-hmm. You get me like 40 saves or something, and it's just like. Hopi is like, it would be like number one on the list, like in total. That's why he's he's my number one pick for goalie. Mm-hmm. And I think where you might like struggle to pick who's who would uh, who would be the second guy on your list for goalie. The second guy on my list is kind of reaching, you know, in the way back machine. But uh, Jose Theodore, mm-hmm. uh, I'm still scarred from. As a kid, watching his inferior Montreal Canadiens teams beat a much superior Boston Bruins team twice in three years, and sort of the same thing with Holby, mm-hmm. where the Bruins had no answer. No answer for the guy in either series. It wasn't much an excuse in 04 when you had a pretty much a loaded team the offensively. The only time up until that point in the history of the Bruins in which the Jacobs family has owned the team where they actually went balls out and tried to win a Stanley Cup. No. And you're up three games to one. And, you know, he steps up. He shuts you down in game seven at home. You shit all over the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'm also going to pick a Montreal Canadiens goaltender. Carey Price. Carey Price probably isn't like an obvious choice because he has beat you twice in the playoffs, but I mean, you've also beaten him twice in the playoffs. True. And there have been times in regular seasons where it seemed like you can't beat him, and then just because you play in the same division, you play yeah. a lot. But in, even in 11, like he was great in that, that series, and he was he kept the Canadians in it, and he, he, he's. I feel like he's always been a thorn in the side of the Bruins. Um, so he's my, he's definitely my second pick. There's going to be a lot of Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, a lot, so. of, a lot of Montreal Canadiens on this list, just the nature of the business. It was scarred, a little yeah. scarred. Yeah. Uh, As any good Bruins fan would be. Uh, defenseman? So my number one, 
defenseman is P.K. Subban. Yeah. And, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, mm-hmm. but just you talk about a guy that always seems to come up with the big goal at just the right time for the Canadians or, or just, you know, doing mm-hmm. something foolish to draw a penalty. Yeah. And the Montreal Canadiens, they go on a power play. And the Canadians, historically, they go on the power play. That's why, why he's hated so much. Yeah. <laughs> But, Bang him. but you love to hate him. You do. He's one of those characters that y- y- you kind of need that villain. Mm. And he always seemed to fit the mold of the villain. And it hasn't been the same since he left the Canadians and played for the Predators and now the Devils. But now you have him back in the division, at least this year, with the Devils. But he's sort of lost that. Yeah. Not quite the same guy. But. Still waiting for him to fight Trent Frederick. He said he was going to beat yeah. the shit out of him. I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're waiting for it, PK. I would just like to see Subban drop the gloves once. <laughs> it just, I don't think I've ever seen the guy fight. Well, he fought Brad, fought Brad Marsh. That was one of the worst hockey fights I've ever seen in my life, where he's winding up with these huge haymakers, and Marshawn just like, man, he moves out of the way, and it looks ridiculous. It's like a cartoon. Uh, two of the biggest clowns in the NHL. The, um, so, I also have P.K. Subban on the list for the same exact reasons. Um, it was there game one in 14 where he scored in overtime mm-hmm. and just wanted to throw something out <laughs> out of the promenade where my dad and I were watching the <laughs> game. Uh, it's just it's such so hateable, and yeah. hateable for a reason. Um, of course, that will... That will lead people to say, "Well, you hate him because he's black." No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna be honest with you. like that, that's what like well, uh, what's his face? Felger can was like, "Yeah, people hate him because he's black." And like, no, no, <laughs> no like, people hate him because he's not saying Boston isn't a racist city because it is. <laughs> um, but I think Bruins fans don't like the guy because he's yeah. kind of a fucking clown. Yeah, and he happens to score goals in big moments against mm-hmm. the Bruins. It's just like okay, yeah, like. He's just one of those just really hateable athletes that just happens to play for your most hated rival. Yeah. And that, like, that's almost like bonus points. Yeah. Uh, number two on my list for defensemen, recent scarring, is Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman yeah. <laughs> dominated that. Well, he dominated pretty much all the playoffs last week, so I can't exactly say it's, uh, it's just the Bruins, but it's, you know. It stands out pretty much in my mind how well he played against the Bruins in that series. Mm. Yeah, I had uh, I had Hedman on a second on my list too. The, the de- I found the defensemen were pretty hard. Yeah. Because I mean, after these first two, I mean, you kind of get into some deep cuts, and you really kind of. My deep cut you know, is um, another Montreal Canadian, <laughs> <laughs> Patrice Brisebois. Who uh, was he? Scored goals in those series in o two, uh, o four, and o eight. You know, yeah. lose three series in a row to the Canadiens. And Patrice Brisebois, you don't actually think about him because it's Patrice Brisebois. Right. But he he he's a guy who was effective against the Bruins in like big moments and kind of crushed them a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. um, he's a guy you wouldn't think of off the bat. Yeah. No, I honestly, when you told me that, I, 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 so far off my radar. Well, you couldn't pick him out of a lineup. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who you got third defenseman? I really, after the first two, I had a real difficult time. Oh, so did I. Yeah. So did I. I had a real difficult time. I really wasn't able to to pick anyone else out. It was much easier for the forwards. I rounded it out to be. Um, Alex Petrangelo, because of the way he played so well. Mm-hmm. And, 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 I mean, you don't see Petrangelo a lot. So, it's one of those things where it's like, eh, yeah. But it's, the biggest moments made the biggest plays and was just rock solid for, you know, that defense core mm-hmm. for uh, it's the St. Louis Blues. So, yeah. all right, let's, we'll move on. One name, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess he's, mm, it was one series, but he was huge, mm-hmm. uh, Carlson in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too. 
but really outside of that, you know, can, do you ever really remember him, you know, beating up on the Bruins? Not exactly. No. Not exactly. And that was like him at his absolute yeah. you know, peak in that, you know. Uh, forwards, yes. Forwards. Would you like to start with the obvious number one forward? So, my number one forward, and again, this is kind of going a little bit in the way back machine, but it's somewhere I'm, I've been totally scarred for, for life. Richard Zednick. Yeah. Richard Zednick. And, it, and, you know, part of what made him a monster was what happened with uh, Kyle McLaren. Yeah. In the vicious hit in game four in 2002. Yeah. Just totally unnecessary. The Bruins had that game in the bag. It, like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And yeah. He went off in that series, and he also he also was a big factor in the 0-4 series too. Yeah. He scored the, uh, he actually scored both goals in game in, uh, game seven. Yeah, so kind of a, a kick in the dick by uh, Richard Zednick, who uh, almost had his <laughs> throat cut open when he was playing in Florida. That was fun. That's what you get. That's what you get, Dick Zednick. Um, I also had Richard Zednick on my on my list. Um, the number one obvious guy I, I was just is Thomas Vanek. Like Thomas Vanek. <laughs> Vanek yeah. is like uh, when he was playing with Buffalo would always yeah. score against the Bruins no matter what the fucking game was. I mean regular season yeah. game mostly. They did beat they did beat him when he was uh playing for Buffalo in the 2010 series. Uh but that wasn't Vanek's fault. No. No. Yeah. Um yeah, Thomas Vanek's a uh, a good one, and then the one time, and I know we've gone through this before on this podcast, but the one time where they could have, you know, slayed the dragon, if you would, and kept him out of the hands of someone else, is trading for him at the deadline in 14, that would have cost them the same exact acquisition cost it took to get Andre Mazaros. Yep, and they go, he goes to Montreal, and they beat him. They That's, beat him in 14. It was, like, completely predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, another guy on my list, uh, Tomas Placanic, another Canadian. <laughs> We're just gonna keep him, keep him rolling up. But uh, he pl- also played very well when he was um, with uh, Toronto mm-hmm. in. Um, I keep forgetting uh, the series, eighteen or nineteen. I believe it was nineteen. Yeah, and he he did a great checking job on the um, first line of the Bruins when um, Toronto was able to. To to uh, have last change, and he was a big factor in those games. I mean, Toronto didn't win, but you think of the 08 series. He scored some big goals mm-hmm. in that series. Um, just always seemed to be a thorn in the side for the Bruins. Uh, so yeah, Thomas Plekanec um, was one of my forwards. Mm-hmm. I went uh, no, slightly off uh, where you were with Plekanec and I chose uh, Saku Koivu. Saku Koivu. Another, huh? another Montreal Canadian. <laughs> Might as well just all be Canadian. Just, you know, just, you know, the captain up there for so long. Mm-hmm. Beat the Bruins three times? I think so. In the playoffs? Yeah. Um, just, he always seemed to be out there in big moments for them against the Bruins. And, yeah, I guess you, you kind of see a theme here where, you know, we we start reminiscing about this stuff, and you hear the choppers. I mean, you lose four series to the Montreal Canadiens, and they're in your division. In the 2000s, you lose yeah. four series. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, obviously, that they're, they're going to be a lot of guys. I believe I might have someone else in Montreal. I do not. I, I do. I, we do. Yes. Yeah. I do. <laughs> uh, let's just get all the Canadians out yeah. of the way. On my list, Alexei Kovalev. I had him too. <laughs> yeah, Alexei Kovalev. Um, is there a, don't exactly know how to put it, but he just always seemed to be the guy who would just get a goal and sink you. Um, remember scoring him scoring a goal without his helmet, and he's flying around, and yeah. Jack Edwards. Was like, it looks like Gila Fleur out there. Jack, shut <laughs> yeah. the fuck up, please. It's typical Jack. Uh, yeah, I mean, he also had that play where he 
faked a little, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, when Travis Green slashed him. Pretty pretty blatant slash, and it was amazing he didn't get called for a penalty mm-hmm. on it. But I guess that's the sort of thing that oh, well, you double you, over time in a you look at that series. You look at that play then, it's not as egregious. If that happens now, it's like a fucking yeah. five-minute <laughs> match. <laughs> that, <laughs> tap right there, that, but it's it, like... It really is amazing what guys could get away with prior to the uh, 4 5 lockout. Yeah. And clearly that was one of them, but that was the that was the saddest pl- play or act, anything I've seen on the ice of a National Hockey League game. That, you know, the, the arm thing. And yeah. Then he, then he bumps into Sheldon Soaring. Yeah. And Glenn Murray's off to the races. Uh, but not to take away from uh, Kovalev having, uh, you know, great series against the Bruins. Mm-hmm. I do remember in uh, 08, and he was he was pretty good there. Um, another guy I have on my list because of um, 2019, Ryan O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. Just because of that one series and how good he was. He was phenomenal. He was really good. He was the difference. Yeah, he was. No, no he was a guy you... You didn't have an answer for him. Um, you know, he was a, an example of one of the Blues' best players stepping up huge the whole series. Mm. Um, where you kind of saw a little less of some of the top guys for the Bruins. Mm. I mean, injuries and, and whatnot. Well, he was, you know, two, you talk about 200 foot game, like he was. Mm-hmm. Good defensively and always coming up with like clutch goals, and uh, yeah, O'Reilly was a pain in the dick in that series, and you know, that's really the only. I mean, he did play for Buffalo very briefly and mm-hmm. get got some goals here and there, but just because of the twenty nineteen Stanley Cup final, mm-hmm. I would put him. I would definitely put him on the list. Uh, do you have any other uh, forwards? I do, uh, Danny Briere. Danny Briere. Mm-hmm. Someone I do not have on the list if you want to um, say it's why. You know, they they had to deal with him in Buffalo and in Philadelphia. Yeah. And he was on the 2010 Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, um, he was a guy that just always seemed to catch the Bruins. And um, just a player I never liked when the Bruins were playing against him. He mm-hmm. just the little guy and he just you know historically the Bruins have always been sort of a it's slower lumbering yeah. kind of team and he's the type of guy that just can or could just skate circles around you and always seem to come up with a goal at big time yeah no I think I think that's a good pick I have uh, another guy this is more of a recent thing um JG Pajot who has scored in both games the Islanders have um played against the Bruins. He just always seems to score against the Bruins mm-hmm. for some reason. Um, not a huge factor in their loss against Ottawa, um, but he was he was around, and he, he you know he seemed like a kind of a pain in the ass. He just seems like that guy. I put him on the list now that he seems like he's <laughs> growing into that Bruin killer role because yeah. as of now, you can't think of any active guys right off the top of your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's also, yeah, especially with this season and, and new alignment, uh, division alignment, and, you know, guys that you would, you know, historically think, you know, would be Bruins killers on Toronto or Montreal or Ottawa, you don't play them this year, so you're just not going to think of them mm. off the top of your head. Yeah, I, I think Pajot would, would, would definitely be a guy. Do you have any? Do you have anyone else you want to... Um, that was pretty much where I really couldn't think of anyone mm. else that was... Um, I had to go back to playoff. Automatic. I had to go back to playoff series and be like, "Oh well, the biggest moments, yeah. what killed the Bruins?" Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't going to. I, I was thinking of maybe Brent Seabrook just because of Game Five and the scoring, but he, he really didn't have like that massive an, of an impact on that series. It mm-hmm. was, if anything, I would put Patrick Kane there because because yeah. Kane was was think it was Game Five where he scored the two goals yeah. and that kind of sunk the Bruins. And it, Chicago was able to pack it in and prevent any any goals from being scored on um, Crawford, who had a fucking hole in his glove. Yeah, I was gonna say they 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 sewed up that that hole pretty damn quick yeah. after after Game Four. 
And they did it by forechecking Zidane Ochara really hard. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, okay, there's holes in Ochara's game yeah. pretty often. <laughs> like, uh, I really didn't want to uh, – I didn't really have too much on the agenda today because, again, we're just beating our heads against the wall talking about the same shit all the time because – We've pointed out the flaws from the very get-go, and they're still pretty prevalent. Mm. Uh, and I figured we should have done we we could do something a little bit more fun and take a take a look back because you know that's what Bruins fans yeah, do. That's what we do. Yeah. We live in the past, good and bad. Yeah, mostly bad. Mostly bad. Mostly bad. We're probably gonna do. Even though it's weird, there are certain bad things that we reminisce about almost like they were good things that mm. happened. It's, yeah. it's kind of sick. I, I don't know what's wrong with them. So you're going to suffer and you're going to be happy for it. Yeah, it, it's bizarre. I, you can't explain you got to be a Bruins it's, fan to understand it's it. It's like self shot in Freud. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, this was just like a, a bit of a quick one. Uh, is there anything you, you would want to add where we like head out? and? Oh, okay. Uh, Nicole's... Uh, Nicole really wants to, to no 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 you've been talking about it so you need to you need to say something about um, Nesson's fun little new feature nice. that um, I bet uh, <clears throat> Dale Arnold fucking hates. Yeah, the predict the game. Yeah. Um, fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, uh, who do you think is gonna score first, Jake Dubrasco, David Krejci? We're not talking about. Like, we're not talking about a reasonable network. Jack Edwards is... I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, like, really? Is this messing? I would say you're better than this, but you're not. They're not yeah, better. No, they're this really is, not. This, I, is, I just, this is right up there, Al. Uh, They've been doing this foolish nonsense for years. Who the hell is in their marketing team and research team to think that actual Bruins fans would enjoy that. Pit Cat fans, sure. That's like, what oh, they're going yeah. for, though. I just, like, yeah. I... I, I <laughs> don't say um, No, I just, like, I honestly think it's, like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sick of the intermission. I'm mm-hmm. sick of um, just, like, oh, what do you think? Oh, Brick, what do you think? And, again, Jack and Brick, that last game, as a side note, against <laughs> the game. No, it's fun. They... What the hell, Messin? You need to get a new broadcasting team because Brick was definitely drunk. Jax <laughs> lost his mind because it this was is, just, yeah. this has been the past I decade. Know, yeah. but I, I just, Jack like, lost it was his really, mind somewhere around like 2008. It was re- like I, I was like I of course I know that, but it was more prevalent, and I was just uh, it was screw it like. Obviously, the Bruins played awful, but it was made even worse by the commentators and then kept on talking about predict the game, which is like really gets to me. And I was just like, this is an unwatchable product for me right now. Like, and you and I talked about yesterday when we were like (laughs) waiting for the second period of the Colorado um, Vegas. Vegas game about like how the ratings are higher. It's like, Nesson, is your ratings higher because of the Bruins? Cause, it's because uh, of the Bruins. It's, I know it's because of the Bruins, but it's like, how are people putting up with this? Like, why are we, why are we calling We're it like, the revolution it, here? Nesson is the laughing stock yeah. of the rest of the NHL. I just, yeah. the laughing stock. I understand that. I just, like, the predict the game is just really, it just, oh, it gets and me it, and so it's, much. And in it has to be said that like, Billy Jaffe's like the best yeah. person there. And mm-hmm. Billy Jaffe just fucking rolls with it and he's like, okay, I'm just going to roll this into me talking about what's going on on the ice. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, thank you, Jeff. Billy, he's so good at, at what he does. And I'm, I'm start, like, Daddy Razor, Andrew Raycroft's kind of uh, growing on me <laughs> a little bit. He needs to just not stop looking into the camera very sensually because <laughs> it's really weird. Um, but... Uh, Jaffe pretty much saves that whole pre- and and Dale Arnold's about to hit the bottle too because he's like you know Dale Arnold's basically a freaking Mormon but like he he's he's like losing it himself and it's just these guys have been on the air for so long they need to be taken out to the woodshed. And-
common I can't sense. post this now. I, thanks. No, thank you. I Jesus. said shoot them up with common well, sense and maybe like Shoot them up with common sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, here's, here's my thing. You know, with Nessun, you know, they had no problem sending um, Don Rosillo packing when Red Sox ratings started to dip a little. I think that was a Red Sox thing. Right? But, I mean, but, like, he's one of the best... Yeah, he's one of, the, in my opinion, he's one of the best guys in baseball. But him and mm-hmm. Remy, like, they just had a great. They made yes. you wanted to. You watched Red Sox games. You watched baseball for them. They they like, had an ability to. If the game was sucked, it it was out of reach one way or the other. They you you tune in to to hear them talk about something, and then hopefully they'd start pissing themselves laughing. Because then you'd be pissing yourself laughing. Oh, yeah. it was something stupid. You see the like, clips of um the, the pizza the pizza thing? that was. <laughs> I mean, classic. It's classic yeah. yeah. Neither one of them could catch their breath, you know. But in, not to say that um, who is it now? Oh, Dave, yeah, Dave, O'Brien. Dave O'Brien. Yeah. I like Dave O'Brien, it's but insane. it's it, no, it's not. Nesson could stand to have a different voice, you know. Please. It's been the same thing Please. now since a new production Sunday. crew. Yeah. Pretty much get rid of everyone except for Jappy and maybe uh, Andrew Redcroft. And yeah, <laughs> just get rid of them all. Like we don't need them anymore. Like, seriously. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, anything else we want to <laughs> talk about that? Sorry. Can we predict what's going to happen tonight? <laughs> predict the game. Who's going to have more saves in the second well, period? I I think we have to kind of take a, a, a different turn with that because obviously the ice issues. At Lake Tahoe, mm-hmm. let's predict the game. Who's gonna break their ankle first? Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> How long are they going to call the okay. game while the no, no, no. Is bad? Adam McQuaid watching the game at home will break <laughs> his leg, <laughs> slipping on an ice cube, because Aww. that's what Adam McQuaid does. Yep. And that being said, um, I've been Chuck Miller, um, Michael Keeney. Uh, we're signing off. Have a good night.